you might want to take a look at this cart over here how we dry things you know I, well, like when I first got started and how we did it in school is every piece of pottery got a piece of plastic dropped over it and I didn't really like that because sometimes putting the plastic right over the pot especially when it's that wet it it makes indentions on it it can you can accidentally put the plastic on it and distort the piece so I have a we have several of these actually I have this great big cart and it it has a bunch of wood shelves on it and these little side things so you can put create the height on the shelf that you want and then we created our own little plastic envelope for this so when I'm done throwing at the end of the day we actually I'm gonna go lift this up a little bit there's the cart we actually close this down so I flip this down we close in the sides and we put clips on them like this and that way the pot gets some air to it so it starts to dry but I don't have plastic touch in each of them and it just creates this good little cozy somewhat humid spot for the pots to stiffen up sometimes it takes one day sometimes it takes two so I can get handles on them cut them off get them upside down and let them start driving so that's drying so that is a little system that we have created now let's talk about drying a little bit we don't have a control on humidity here in our studio some studios do they put in a system that maintains this perfect humidity point for their pots to dry but I don't have that probably would have been a good idea to do it because it would have probably solved some problems for us but anyway so if it's humid and it's raining day after day, these pots are going to take forever to dry. If it is dry and warm and hot, um, these pots will dry like that. So honestly, we, I keep an eye on what the weather's going to be from day to day. And I make decisions about how I'm going to dry these pots depending on if it's going to be a humid day or if it's going to be a wet day. Sometimes we... We'll leave the cart open all day long if it's a little bit more humid and let it stiffen up a little bit and then tighten it down at night other times we just tighten it down really tight and uh, don't let you know any any uh, air other than just the air inside the cart to get in there so um, you know drying is something that you really have to pay attention to because if you put all this energy in perfecting the perfect pot, the last thing you want to do is have it crack. And um, it's just one of the battles that we have here every day in and out is uh, drying our pots in a way that they won't crack. And we're getting better with it. Um, when I was in my uh, basement studio, I was in a human environment. It wasn't as much of an issue watching the pots because they, they slowly dry because I was in a human environment in the basement. We are now in this wonderful 2,500 square foot studio. It is It has air conditioning and heat, which is something that I didn't have in another studio. And so that affects our drying process and it affects whether things are gonna crack or not. After these get to a place where they're past leather hard, the bottoms have been cleaned, they've been stamped, we stick them on another cart and when we're getting close to uh, the final drying process I'll actually stay, take that whole cart put it in the kiln room before we will put it into a kiln so it's kind of my last drying step my uh, security there my whatever you want to call it so the cart goes into the kiln room the kiln room has air circulating in it because we are sucking fumes out of the roof with a big fan and bringing in fresh air through a window so it gets some air circulation and it's dry in there and it's warm in there and so that way I know with if my pots that have been almost completely dry go into the kiln room during a firing that next morning they're going to be ready to go in the kiln and be misfired without me having to ride my 
you know, the, the computerized kiln telling it to preheat for so many hours to dry it out more. We just utilize what the environment is in the kiln room to do the final drying of our pots before we stick them into our bisque firing. So um, we have very little pieces blowing up because we use that process. Anyway, that's some tips today with the utensil holder, cracking, firing, all that stuff. Um, so this is Sue with Salvaterra Pottery. Hope you're enjoying all the videos we're sending your way. If you have some questions, please feel free to reach out and ask us. If you have something you would like for me to throw, I'd be happy to do that for you. Just let me know if you have, um, you want to see other parts about the studio and how we do something in particular that you've seen on our website. I'll uh, talk to you next time. Appreciate you stopping by. Visit Salvaterra Pottery. Give us a like if this was helpful. Um, hope you follow us or subscribe to us. That always helps. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon. Bye.